Welcome back, everybody. You got Will and I, man, here from the Block Runner, Metazone, Rovi, and M Scribe. And today we're going to talk about DMT, NAT, when indexing, <laughs> when trading. Yeah. What else? Uh, uh, when Lambo. I don't know, dude. Who's saying that? What I don't know. Heck? We're getting a ton of questions, dude. Well, I think these are very legitimate questions, dude. I want to know when. For the last I want to know. Well, I want to know when Lambo, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's ever going to happen for me, at least. <laughs> <laughs> seems to be happening for everybody else out there, which is yeah. so congrats to the Ordinals community for all your, right, right. you know, all your f- givings from the universe and such. Yeah. But yes, there are some critical, crucial questions being asked when, when, when for good reason, right? Cause yeah, I mean, there's a ton of token protocols emerging in this, not just Ordinal space, like in all of web three at the moment, mm-hmm. a lot of them kind of like piggybacking on what BRC twenties is kind of like, incepted yeah as far as like creating these new whatever json structures or now there's like new different variants of packaging information into different parts of bitcoin to create mm-hmm. fungible tokens and such but yeah every time these events happen it's like okay yeah i like this idea i want to inscribe these new yeah this new class of assets <laughs> but then it's like quickly as soon as like i have ownership of them now i want to utilize them i want to yeah. participate in this ecosystem so I need some indexers to kind of like tell me what's actually happening. That's right. That's right. So yeah, same thing applies to the DMT ecosystem yeah. and the non-arbitrary tokens. So we're hearing you. <laughs> we hear your calls for win indexing, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is a little bit complex because first of all, we're having tracks, which um, Benny created the TAP protocol. Yeah. So the TAP protocol exists. And the, the reason why it exists is so that it can be extended and add functionality. Right. Yes, because as we know, a lot of these tokens do not have logic or programmability to them, whatever. Yeah. Right. So you can't, you can't have like any kind of like dynamic mechanism to how they're generated. Right. How their existence comes to be, whatever, whether they get burnt or not, things like this. You could typically program these types of events or sequence of events, like using smart contracts back in Ethereum land. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> but here on Bitcoin land, there's a huge absence of, of, of yeah. logic. Yeah, right. correct. Yeah, uh, pretty much every single fungible token standard has some sort of uh, deploy inscription, mm-hmm. and that deploy comes with a supply cap pretty much. already decided by a human arbitrarily, right? Yeah, that's the arbitrary era. Right. Yes, yes, yes. And and then you have to mint a certain amount, a limit, like yeah. typically a thousand, mm-hmm. and uh, that's our also arbitrary, right? Yeah, yeah. And so we come, we came up with a way to do non-arbitrary tokens using digital matter theory. Right. Yes. So, so we have tons of videos you guys can kind of explore if you want to know more. Yeah. About. So so this has huge implications, which means that if every token protocol doesn't acknowledge, you know, expansionary supply because they have like an embedded design, which is arbitrary caps. Fixed well, supplies. Yeah. Yeah. We have to have Benny, which is, you know, the guy running TAP protocol, mm-hmm. ha- ask him to update the TAP protocol so they can acknowledge expansionary tokens. Correct. So that's one element of why this takes a, a little bit of time. And mm-hmm. we didn't want to invent a new token protocol because we didn't, it wasn't necessary. Yeah. And so we didn't. Yeah. All right. So we use existing token protocols, pseudo existing because they kind of existed with tap protocol, but they also kind of did not exist. Yeah. So that is like a whole new function, like an introduction of a new function to, again, like uh, the dynamic ability of, of now this token class, which are the yeah. tap tokens, right? And this can be applied hopefully across the board to all token ecosystems into the future once they introduce new yeah. mechanisms of enabling, you know, extendable functions, right? But this function is important. And it, the reason why it's so comp- complex in regards to NAT is because every element that gets registered or um, every pattern that gets identified, it, it, it's, it's a different variable of that same function, right? Because like one pattern introduces like a, a certain expansionary rate that's right. Which is different from another pattern, right? That's it right. all depends right. on, you know, the likelihood of its existence within the block information, right? It's yeah, and then who who does all the investigating? Right, yeah. the, the indexer, in this case, Benny. Benny yeah. is doing a new kind of indexing that hasn't been done before <laughs> because typically in indexing, it's like, oh, you have a you have a meta protocol. It looks like this JSON or it looks like whatever whatever this this thing is, my, my design. And all indexers do is track the transfers of these protocols. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. It's like it goes from one address, one address to another address, and that's all they're doing. Correct. Benny, in this case, as nice as Benny is, he's, he's helping us here. 
He's like, okay, not only am I going to index the transfers of NATs and all that stuff, but I'm also going to provide a lookup table of all these elements that have been formally recognized. Mm -hmm. And the, each element is going to have an expansionary rate and inflationary supply, right? And then each element is going to have a different pattern recognition and it's going to point to a different data field within Bitcoin. Yeah. And I'm going to put that all accessible to the community in the form of API calls. Mm, so what can you do with that? And so now whenever someone comes up and say, I want to generate a non-arbitrary token, I'm going to look at all the elements that exist. Mm. I'm going to see the patterns that make sense for whatever it is that I'm doing. If that pattern doesn't exist, I'm going to inscribe a new element with that pattern. And then Benny with that new element inscription is going to say, okay, I see your pattern. Yeah. I'm going to see how many times that pattern occurs in all 800, 820,000 blocks yeah. on Bitcoin. And I'm going to give you a number. Correct. I was like, how many exist so far? And then I'm going to give you another number and say, how many is probably going to exist at a given rate? Yeah. Right. And so that stuff does not exist. It is in progress. Yes. And it's a whole different, like, I guess, procedure to what like uh, today's indexers are, I guess, used to. Yeah. Like in, in this specific ecosystem of what it is they're looking out for in like the Bitcoin block data, right? They're looking for like specific syntax mm -hmm. structures that are put forth every time like a new protocol emerges. And so it's, it's kind of, I guess it's, it's not that much of a, of an exercise to kind of like readjust your indexing to these different protocols. Cause you know, procedurally they're all, they're all arbitrary information, right? So it's, it's, it's not that radically different from one another, mm -hmm. like, you know, so it's, but in this case, this is like one time where the procedures and like what it is the indexer is actually looking for, the, the, the layer of, I guess, uh, information that they need to access is different, right? So, Yeah, this is way more complex yeah. than any other fungible token protocol out there. It's way it's, more complex. Yeah. Right? So um, what else? So having said that, <clears throat> when can we do it? So it's complex. We've established that. <laughs> Do you have a, a when, foreseeable when token? Yeah. yeah like, like how complex is it? And then how long does it take for these complexities to kind of arrive at a, an execution point? So, so we're not even done talking about the complexity. Okay. We're not even done. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So understanding that the protocol, the DMT protocol is already complex in the form of like indexing and providing projects and not only just mscribe projects but any project that decides to implement this on their website mm -hmm. let's say like ordinal's wallet they, they want to say hey i want to support non-arbitrary tokens as well i don't want to support the trading and all that stuff yeah i also need those api calls benny so of course benny is going to supply those api calls to ordinal's wallet and whoever marketplace wants to use it yeah all right so there's that and then the other complexity thing is well we're in the midst of a transition between Mm. the ordinal client 0.9 to 1.0 jubilee update jubilee which is happening on block 824 355 or something like that 544 544 so 824 544 which i think is projected somewhere around early january yeah first week of january so about two to three weeks out so why is this important as yeah. well so this is where it gets more complex because if you're an indexer and you're like literally coding this stuff, mm -hmm. you understand the differences between 0 0.9 and 1.0. Yeah. And you understand the differences between all the ordinal client updates, mm -hmm. right? You, you understand like pretty much every ordinal client update is, is essentially an envelope of, of different method to index. Yeah. And with each update, there's there's essentially a new method to index. Mm. And so now you're having to kind of decide. It's like, well, should I index everything now, you know, prior to this 1.0 update, and then re-index everything after the 1.0 update? Yeah. Right? And so since we're so close to this update, it just makes sense for Benny to, like, because Benny's, just, you know, extremely busy. Yeah, he's got a lot on his plate for sure. Yeah. So, so Three ben separate ecosystems to manage and such. Yeah. And, and then, of course contribute and make sure like ordinals in general there's several dilemmas afoot oh yeah that he's trying to contribute to, like solutions towards and such so yeah he's a busy guy for yeah. sure yeah so he was like okay guys it's like if we index now i'm gonna have to re-index and, and pretty much redo my work after yeah. the 1.0 update Correct. and the 1.0 update you kind of need anyways because you're dealing with tokens that are being inscribed as children right bmt for example and, and then you want to take advantage of bulk inscriptions for children as well, which Correct. is a 1.0 update. Yeah. And then 
you're talking about using metadata for bitmaps as well, right? So all this stuff, it all makes sense. Like, let's just wait till the 1.0 update right. in order to start indexing all these uh, NAT tokens. So TLDR, basically, we got to get Jubilee yeah. like out of the way first, yes. right? So that we can develop, I guess, like the most optimal indexing or track core, I guess, infrastructure around what presumes to be probably the most like uh, feature complete version of, of ordinals, right? The base layer protocol itself, mm -hmm. which probably means you won't expect like, you know, as much of a rapid um, occurrence, like of updates, right? Once we get to 1.0, I'm pretty sure, you know, that core foundation group of developers who are maintaining the ordinal client, they're not going to be pushing regular updates as much as they Oh have. no, they won't. No, right. no, it's going to be more of a stringent update process. Like, yeah. It, I think so too. It's going to happen a lot less often. Yeah. And it's going to require a lot more, you know, conversations. Feedback and Feedback, such. exactly. Yeah. And and then it'll be formally recognized as like it's finally going to be updated at this particular block height. All the developers who are leveraging the previous Ordinals client, well, you, you got time to update your system so that once that update occurs, you're ready to, you know, continue your, your business. Yeah. It's kind of interesting that Unisat has chosen to kind of like bypass all that yeah it's, it is a, it is a little weird but but that's a whole different conversation <laughs> yeah there, there could be a lot of reasons behind that and but benny has made it pretty publicly clear like you know tap and the whole track ecosystem is is aligned with uh the ordinal base client yeah and that's why you know that's another reason why he invented the tap token which is which is a brc20 design mm -hmm. but with ex you know, extendability, extendability. So, yeah. so it's like more functionality can be done with tap or with uh, compared to BRC20. Of course. Yeah. Cause it's needed, right? We need right. that. Yeah. Be, be, because the, the whole point is like with these ordinal client updates, there's new functionalities that you can take advantage of. So, Correct. so why not take advantage of those? Why, yeah. why be stuck in yeah. like a previous like design? <laughs> I think it's going to be made pretty clear here, not just with what it is we're rolling out along with tap, there's going to be other developers that are going to see the value in bringing about new, you know, ecosystems, leveraging functional tokens and mm -hmm. such. So it's going to be pretty obvious where the value can stem from that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, th this is, uh, this is us and our attempt at, you know, leveraging tap and I guess, um, the full feature set of ordinals once it is released on Jubilee period. Yeah. Post Jubilee period. So yeah, so that, that, that gives us like a rough estimate or time frame. So, okay. Jubilee's here. Let's call it January 10th. Yeah. So what happens on yeah, yeah. January 10th. What do we what do we expect as NAT holders? So what you can do is if you're familiar with the TAP protocol or really any fungible token protocol, there's a way to create a transfer inscription of your tokens. Mm -hmm. So on websites who are kind of supporting the whole NAT ecosystem, mainly um, Mscribe will be supporting it. Mm -hmm. You go to Mscribe and you'll be able to see your entire balance of your NAT right there. It's just you you connect your wallet, boom, there's your, there's your balance. Okay. And then you from there you can click on a transfer and they'll ask you how many tokens of these NETs do you want to transfer. You put in an amount that doesn't go beyond your balance, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then you create a transfer inscription and then you can list it anywhere, including mm -hmm. Mscribe. Okay. And now you can start trading NETs. Well, so, what about elements? So elements, the first one that's going to be recognized is DMT eleven dot element. Which is the element for the NAT token and BMT token, right? Correct. So yeah, that was the first one that we registered, but there's been tons of other elements registries are there. pointing to the same one. Right. Well, other patterns that have been you sure. know, recognized through our inscription process. Yeah, right? correct. Now, how soon do we expect like some of those to be, I guess, officially recognized? So from, from, uh, and, and we'll show you some interfaces here to kind of paint the picture. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, all elements that follow the standard are going to be recognized. Okay. Right. Yeah. But, but you got to remember each element points to a field on Bitcoin's data. Mm -hmm. So that data is not accessible until we get DMT running and we got NETs going and everything. Yeah. So, so that's first. Then after it's like, okay, now we support all these elements and there's API calls for the data within these elements mm -hmm. that anybody can use to point to and stuff. And then that's going to come after, you know, this, this initial kind of NAT focus release. Okay. So <clears throat> we should expect any, anybody who's, I guess, inscribed, uh, uh, 
a new non-arbitrary token deployments that has been referencing the same DMT.11 element that those NAT are all tradable. Yeah, so they will be recognized and uh, basically participants within the, like the the very beginnings of the NAT ecosystem or DMT yeah. ecosystem. And then as time goes on, we'll support more elements. Yeah, because that's more data fields and mm -hmm. more pattern recognition and more data that that Benny has to kind of look up and add to a database and and create APIs yeah. uh, endpoints for, yeah. and then those will be supported and then therefore tradable and like, you know, now the ecosystem grows. Yeah, it's gonna grow and pretty much probably accelerate now. Okay, so uh, I guess you mentioned mscribe. Let's just take a look at what, well, what it is. How, how are we gonna support this from like a platform perspective? Okay, so first I wanted to show the Genie data. So we've shared this a number of times before, but if you're curious how many NAT tokens you're holding, um, there's a Genie Data site that we'll link in the description below that you can go down here and uh, you probably can't see this, but at the very bottom left, there is a place where you can kind of type in your, your Bitcoin address. You type that in and it'll tell you how many NAT tokens you're holding. Yeah. Right. And as you can see here, this guy is holding 7 trillion tokens, right? This is the top guy. And then we have others, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that. So what is this going to look like? So imagine you go to mscribe and there's these buttons up here, elements, NATs, and scribe. So all that's going to be there, including bitmap. So on elements, you click on this elements and you'll see all the elements that are, that are recognized. Yeah. Right. That, that are following the standards. So this, this entire list will be here. And then you click on DMT, which is the first element that's formally recognized. And it'll take you to the next page. When you're looking at the DMT element, right? This is DMT 11 dot element. Um, you'll see all the DMT deployments that are pointing to this element, mm -hmm. right? On this list, the first one being NAT, the next one is going to be BMT and so forth. Yeah. And so of course this will show you the market caps of each one, right? The available supply, the circulating supply price per unit holders, right? Right now it's like 10,600 holders and it's 99% minted. Um, and so it'll tell you all the data that you would expect for tokens, right, mm -hmm. right here. Um, and then finally, if you click on NATs over here, it is the full list of all non-arbitrary tokens that have ever been generated, right? Um, ranked by their market cap, right? right. So right now, <clears throat> during this early stage where there's only one element, those two pages are basically going to be the same, like identical. They're they're going to be the same roughly until we introduce new patterns, new elements, right, that have. Uh, so I suspect that on on the day, you'll see more than just a single element, right? They'll they'll be listed here, but they yeah. won't be usable um, in the sense because <coughs> track has to kind of index the data fields that each element is pointing to. Right. Right. So that the functionality there won't be there, but at least you'll be able to see which elements have been inscribed. Yeah, which is important because you know first the ones the first ones. Uh, you don't want to like inscribe something that's already been correct recognized, right? Yeah, and the whole idea is that when you're looking at elements, it's like, okay, I want to create a project. I want to, I want to do a non-arbitrary token. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look at the elements. I'm going to see like the rate of expansion. I'm going to see what patterns that they're looking at because yeah. I think someone inscribed like 42069 or mm -hmm. or E28 something like that. Some yeah. some notable hash value. Um, someone's inscribed, yeah. and so they they want to create a a project off of it. So you'll be able to click on the element. And when you click on it, you can actually create your own token yes. from this element, right? From yeah. the interface. Correct. Right. And it'll be pretty simple. It's like you put in the, the ticker and then that's it. Like, then you're done. And then you deploy the token. Which is the point, right? Because you don't have to make that arbitrary decision. Correct. No. How many of these tokens actually exist? It's it, it's non-arbitrarily determined. That's right. And, uh, and, and uh, observable, I guess, every time a new block is is uh confirmed yeah right? that's right the new b observable existence of these tokens so. yeah it's in the same way as like you you create a brc20 and you arbitrarily put 21 million on there yeah like clearly a lot of people are doing are, that. are selecting 21 million yeah right so what if you found a non-arbitrary token or an element that had roughly 21 million in supply mm, that would be pretty cool right it would be so yeah. you would you would imagine that these projects that are generating non-arbitrary tokens are probably using that element, right? Mm, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that opportunity is there. Um, and so you have a list of NETs and then finally, when you're looking at your, so this is, this is the coolest part right here. It's like when you're finally looking at your bitmap, right? 
And we have this this concept called block drop tokens, mm -hmm. right? BMT is the first one, right? Yeah. And when you're looking at Bitmap, there is going to be a tab here called NATs. And once you click on that tab and this is your Bitmap, you'll be able to see all the block drop tokens that are associated to your Bitmap. Mm. And then you'll be able to click on mint all. And then there's going to be a little check boxes here that you can deselect some that you don't care about. And, or you can select the ones that you do care about and then inscribe them all. And then when you click on one of these, it'll tell you mint progress, available supply, and circulating supply. So where are all these coming from? I mean, we know where BMT came from, but this yeah, is, the rest of these are theoretical, right? Yeah. Like, they don't exist natively. Correct. They I mean, do they, they do, but somebody has to first discover the pattern yeah. and reference it in a, in a deployment inscription that is... Uh, that is... um. Leverage is, I think, the third method in our Gitbook. Correct. Which is uh, the, the provenance method, right? Exactly. So the bitmap is what establishes that provenance of ownership of, right? Yeah, that's right. And is that's why every single bitmap is going to have a different quantity of whatever these uh, block dropped tokens are. That's right. right. That's right. And it's, we don't know how much this is just like a representation of what it could look like in the future. But I'm, right. I'm imagining because there's such a large ecosystem to bitmap and there's already roughly on on its way to 30,000. Mm -hmm. like owners That's of right. these different bitmaps. So I can imagine a lot of projects that are, you know, different. I don't know if you want to build a game within yeah. bitmap or such, you, you would want to. Yeah. DeFi on bitmap. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine that. Yeah. So this is like a way to basically distribute these digital commodities within the bitmap layer itself. That's right? correct. Yeah. And then the community is going to be generating these tokens, right? They're going to be pointing to the, the first bitmap, right? As part of their deployment inscription, right? That's how you mm -hmm. create that provenance. Yeah. And then as a bitmap holder, you're just going to be getting all these block drop tokens, mm -hmm. right? And it's up to you to decide and figure out like which of these ecosystems I'm going to participate in. Yeah. And then when, once you mint them, you can mint all of them all at once if you want. And these are all going to be children. So think of your, your bitmap as, as the parent. This is a collection. Bitmap is a collection. Yeah. It's a collection of transactions, which are parcels. It's a collection of these non-arbitrary tokens based off the data within the bitmap block, mm -hmm. right? And all these, all these like units, right? The transactions, the parcels, all these like non-arbitrary tokens, they become children of your bitmap. Yeah. And so any indexer for thousands of years, they'll be able to see on-chain provenance mm -hmm. that these tokens, these parcels, they all came from this bitmap. Mm. Yeah. Right. And that's the point. Yeah. Well, there you go, dude. Yeah. So this is the, I think we got one more screenshot over there or no? Uh, let's see. Oh yeah. And so the marketplace, what does the trading look like? Uh, so you'll be able to trade obviously your parcels and your bitmap here on Mscribe, but as well as NAT. So it's a simple marketplace trading as you see anywhere. You basically create the transfer for the tokens and then that transfer can be listed and then anybody can purchase it. It's PSBTs, pretty standard. <clears throat> so how soon after Jubilee do you think uh, all this will be, all the support will be, you know? For for DMT.11, for NATs, for BMT, all that will be supported on that day. On that day. Yeah. All right, dude. So once we get closer to Jubilee, we'll definitely chime back in. Uh, if anybody has any questions as far as you yeah. know, what else is remaining, uh, what what can be released beforehand or as far as like, I don't know, um, for preparation materials, just there's not much yeah. you really need to do as far as preparations, right? No, it's not really. It's more of like we're just waiting around again for the uh, overall for the ordinals, like infrastructure layer to kind of yeah. cement itself into its finals version so that we and, and Benny and track and tap yeah. can kind of like roll out its, its official support for everything. Yeah, right? that's right. And yeah, once we get past all that, dude, it's, it's uh, you know, yeah, that's, ecosystems up and running. So that's really what we're all waiting for. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's been taking a little bit longer than um, than we'd want, but it, mm -hmm. it happened to align perfectly with this release. And like the, it's ne necessary because of the functionality that's behind this release. Yeah. So uh, I appreciate everybody's patience. And obviously this is this thing is pretty complex in comparison to a lot of things out in the orderly <coughs> ecosystem. Yeah. But uh, complexity makes it more entertaining, mm. right? Yeah, and we have an Mscribe Discord in case you didn't know. So we're going to be doing probably the most, that's the most the relevant place to be to, for, you know, questions you have about yeah. this stuff. Uh, and, of course, there's there's already, like, a classes of bit informaticists in there <laughs> kind of, like, tinkering around with ideas, yeah. coming up with theories and 
they're they're getting ready. A lot of them have already registered patterns. And yeah, someone someone's registered the uh, the zeros within the block hash, mm-hmm. so which represents oh. the difficulty right of Bitcoin. That's beautiful. Yeah. So yeah, they're in there already right now, just actively discussing like these different concepts of how we could leverage the data layer to create like new value mechanisms, right? And that's kind of the whole point. So yeah, uh, we're gonna do some cleaning up of this Discord for sure. Add new channels for people who want to, you know contribute to those types of conversations and yeah and yeah i think once jubilee happens there's gonna be a very vibrant community yeah because again like this is something we haven't seen before yet and uh yeah there's gonna be a lot of experimenting a lot of like theory crafting and that's kind of the whole point right that's what hope ordinals has been since the very beginning it's like the right. the ultimate experiment and look look what's happening as a result that's right, right. So. that's right so join us, guys. <laughs> all right. Subscribe Discord. Experiment is on the way. So appreciate you guys again. Um, yeah, follow us on our Twitter. Ask us any questions um, in the comment section below. And uh, again, we appreciate you guys, and we will catch you in the next video. Peace.